The other way that we're going to define our programming logic is by using flowcharts. And flowcharts have been used for years and years. And they're very simple. You have a few simple shapes. We're just working with two of the shapes right now. This is the input-output shape, and it should be a very neat, nice, sort of angled rectangle, parallelogram. And that is input, output for a shape. The other shape that we're using here is called a lozenge because it really looks like a cough drop or cough lozenge or tic-tac if I drew it well. As you can tell by my drawing skills, I'm a programmer, not an artist. So these are two shapes. The lozenge is used to indicate the start and end of a program or a piece of a program. And this represents input and output. So this is the exact same thing I just did pseudocode for. We have get name, get animal, get noun, get color, get noun, display poem. And this represents our flow chart. It's only representing one branch of logic because at this point we're not making any decisions, which is fine. This is what's called a procedural, or actually this is a, there are all sorts of, in procedural programming there's a bunch of structures. And this is our most simple structure where we're just doing things in order. It's called a sequence structure. And that just means doing one thing after the other. And it's one of the most basic structures in programming. So this is just having us sequentially do things until we get to the end. And so this is what the flow chart looks like. Now you can do a flow chart just the way I've done here where you have everything drawn out. What you didn't see was me erasing the whole thing and starting over to make it all fit. Drawing flow charts by hand is a bad choice because if you make one mistake you have to do a lot of erasing. But you don't have to pay a lot of money. You can do flow chart in Word, you can use Visio, and through MCC for this class you can get um, free programs for doing flow charting, and there's a lot of free ones on the web. And Visual Logic, that was included in your books for the course. So we're going to be using a computer program because it's much easier on a computer to insert an additional, an additional piece of logic. Whereas if you're doing it by hand, you have to erase it and start over. When I was in college back in the 90s and doing flow charts by hand, we had to get a little stencil to draw everything. And I cannot tell you how happy I was to get computerized flow charting software because making a mistake and erasing something was very painful. Plus, once I got computerized software, if I was doing things that were similar, I could take an old flow chart, copy it, paste it, and make changes to it rather than starting from scratch. So I encourage you to use flow charting software if you're going to do flow charting. And so this is a way that we're going to do most of our logic planning in this course is what, by flowcharting, though I will be doing some pseudocode for examples.